Well, welcome to a new video. In this video I want to do an Xperia 10 Mark II comparison with the LG G7 ThinQ. The LG G7 ThinQ is a device, um, basically a device that is a flagship device from 2018, two years old already. Comes with a Snapdragon 845 and also four gigs of RAM. And uh, this device has some nice features and it is a flagship device and I wanted to test out how the Xperia 10 Mark II as a mid-range device from 2020 can compare against a flagship device from 2018. So let's first of all take a look around the devices. First thing that you will notice both feature a very round design but the Xperia on the left has an edge which is of a matte material, plastic in this case. This one is, I think it is also plastic on top of uh, aluminium. And this one feels a bit slippery. It is a glossy design. It is not bad indeed, uh, because both fit wonderfully in my hands with six and 6.1 inch, 21 by nine, and this is 18 point something by nine aspect ratios so you can see there is a slight difference but the LG G7 is still uh, good operatable with one hand as you can see as well as the Xperia device without any problems. When it comes to the display you can see a difference here this is an OLED the Xperia 10 Mark II and nah, focus this is an OLED and this is an IPS LCD the LG G7 has an overboost function for the um, LCD, which allows you to go up to 1000 nits, which is a pretty bright thing, especially for the summer. The LG G7 uh, has the better uh, brightness level. When it comes to darkness levels and so on, I don't see much of a difference, I have to say. So the Xperia should have better darks, better blacks, because it's an OLED, simply as that. But the displays both are good. Both feature a front-facing camera hidden in a notch here and here notchless on the Xperia. Here you can see the earpiece, here you can see the other earpiece and some sensors as well. Let's go to the back where we can see the cameras. On the LG we have only two cameras, 16 megapixel cameras, ultra wide and normal width it's i wouldn't call it wide anymore because it's 30 millimeters equivalent and you can see the camera bump is pretty minor it's almost non-existent here Let's see almost non-existent and on the xperia 10 mark ii you can see it is a lot bigger it is not as big as other devices but it is a lot bigger and the xperia 10 mark ii has ultra wide white and Taylor so one lens more another thing that we can see is a back facing fingerprint sensor on the LG G7 where the Xperia 10 Mark II has the one on the side both are pretty fast but I think the LG one is a bit faster than the Xperia 10 Mark II ones let's close all apps I will show you later some camera samples with the front facing and the back facing camera samples um, not only pictures but also video. Uh, if you take a look at the round the device both have a USB type C plug but this one is USB type C free I think on the LG G7 so it has very quick uh, read and write speeds and also it has um, the option to plug in to an external monitor if you'd like to do this with the USB type C. Then we here we have the mono speaker, the main speaker. This one blows almost every smartphone out of the water that has only a mono speaker, I would say, because it has a very loud speaker and the Xperia has no chance against this. And also this has the feature of boombox. You can place it on an empty uh, on an empty box or something like this to enhance the sound even more. And you can see here the headphone jack also blows almost every phone out of the water with this quad deck. Uh, which is built in 32-bit, 192 kilohertz, and the Xperia has a 24-bit, uh, 192 kilohertz. 
the USB type C here is only a USB type C with uh, USB 2.0 specification and the front firing speaker here is yeah a bit on the lower end when it comes to the volume so let's take a look at the software itself we have a big difference here because the Xperia is running Android 10 and the LG is still running Android oops, is still running Android 9 uh, I heard that there is already an update out for the LG G7 to Android 10 but I didn't get it here so I cannot test this but let's try out some application and start some applications uh, let's make sure that both of them have no apps running in the background as you can see here and we will start first of all the Play Store one two three and you can see a bit quicker on the LG G7 but the loading times I think it's here just the internet loading times was a bit uh, slower on the Xperia let's try out F Droid to confirm this one two three and in this case the Xperia was a bit quicker in loading F Droid than the LG the next app that we want to start is new pipe one two three and in this case almost so very very similar I think maybe a bit quicker on the LG G7 uh, this is by the way a YouTube client then we want to start Firefox preview as our browser one two three and this was this pr identical there's no difference I think here and what can we start next let's start a game like traffic rider for example one two three you can see the animation was a bit quicker on the uh, LG G7 and it already has the start button here it seems to be a different version here let's click on start here ah now it's loading so let's so no we don't want to install Google stuff you can see the difference in sound quality eventually when I'm just getting the sound down I can show you another difference here uh, the LG has on the left side the volume keys together with the uh, Google Assistant button and the Xperia 10 Mark II has only the volume keys on the right side and on the left side nothing basically only the SIM tray that you can pull out of course without using a SIM tool so let's start and see who is loading the track first one two three and let's go and uh, one two three and you can see here the LG was a tiny bit quicker when it comes to starting but they're also loading a different level I think so is it a good comparison I don't know I would say in general the performance of the LG G7 also when it comes to benchmarks should be a bit quicker than the Xperia 10 Mark II but you can only notice it barely and even if you have both next to each other and starting applications you have some applications that start quicker on the Xperia 10 Mark II and some that start quicker on the LG G7 in general I would say from the performance point of view the Xperia 10 Mark II can be as fast as the LG um, device itself but to do more a bit of more comparison what I want to do is just export a video for example and show you the difference when it comes to exporting a video in KineMaster for example so now you see here my setup I have KineMaster loaded on both devices with the same video clip and I will go to the export function right now and I will export both in full HD 1080p 30 frames per second I will hit the timer and then the export one two three one two three so you can see the LG goes ahead 
quite quickly when it goes to the progress bar and I think the LG will hit on the left and on the right you can see this literally it's a s basically the same there's a two second difference here I think on both when it comes to exporting times 22 seconds almost 23 seconds um, minus 3 of course and uh, the 24 seconds with the um, Xperia 10 Mark II so they are very very close also when it comes to exporting files in their default camera video resolution and talking about default camera video resolution just let's take a look at the cameras let's start with the selfie cams so this is a video with the front-facing camera of the LG G7 and uh, let's test if it has autofocus by trying out my new mustard here. Is it focusing on this? It doesn't seem so. So it has a fixed focus apparently. And this is the audio quality that you can expect from the LG G7. And I think it has stabilization because it is zooming in when I press the uh, button on the selfie cam so it's using some sort of um, electronic stabilization um, is it good or is it not so good we'll see so now we are on the sony phone uh, the xperia 10 mark ii and uh, this one also crops in a bit for stabilization so it also has electronic uh, image stabilization and it also doesn't support autofocusing you can see it here my favorite mustard Get in focus? It's not in focus because it's yeah, no autofocus on the front cam. Um, both of them support um, or have eight megapixel shooters, so yeah, not the best when it comes to taking videos or for taking um, shots of yourself or so selfies. But well, I think for video chat it's decent enough. So let's try out the back camera. This one has autofocus on the LG G7, as you can see here with my favorite mustard again. And uh, it should autofocus on the glass itself and uh, then on my face again. You can see also it's a bit tight because it's a 30 millimeter equivalent on the default camera, but I have the option to go to the ultra wide. Uh, but not during recording. I wanted to switch it during recording. Doesn't work. So now on the ultra wide, you can see a lot of things more than before, and it looks way better. But the ultra wide sadly has no autofocus, as you can see here. My favorite mustard again. It's not autofocusing. Autofocusing on it. Uh, it has stabilization as well as a normal camera, and uh, yeah, this is the quality that you can expect. I think it is by default recording in 1080p 30 frames per second, but it can go up to 4K 60 frames per second, which is a bit more than the Xperia 10 Mark II can do. So this is a test with the Xperia 10 Mark II and this device has a quite a bit wider field of view on the standard lens, which is stabilized by default and it is a 26 millimeters instead of 30 millimeters and of course it crops a bit in because of the video stabilization I hope the autofocus is working fine because in this dark like areas with the aperture being a bit smaller than on the LG you can see yeah, quite a lot of grain and it struggles then to autofocus and uh, yeah but one good feature is I have the possibility to go into the ultra wide angle And this is now the ultra wide angle. You can see it's a lot darker because the sensor is smaller and of course because the aperture is also smaller than on the LG. Uh, so the LG has a clear advantage point when it comes to video filming in darker situations just like for example a rainy gloomy day uh, that I have here for example in Auckland. Tell me in the comments which video cam you think has the better quality and which audio sounds better to you. So videos are not everything. Let's take a look at photos. On the left I have the Xperia 10 Mark II, on the right I have the 
uh, LG G7. So let's start with the first picture here and we will take a look and pixel peep a bit because to be honest if you have them side by side can you tell much of a difference maybe this black here is a bit more black than this one here on the box and the f colors are a bit more uh, vibrant here on the Xperia 10 Mark II than on the LG well, let's zoom in to see what the difference is and you can see the difference is with focus so it's not only that it is more black here but also the focus is a bit missed here it was not focusing on the Xperia box instead I think it is trying to um, grab focus on this bottle of tonic water Schweppes uh, and you can see also a difference in resolution because here we have 16 here we have 12 megabytes uh, 12 megapixels but in general even if I zoom out a bit can I zoom in a bit to make it uh, I cannot quite match it but even then I think the Xperia has a slight edge when it comes to sharpness it nailed the shot simply a bit better but you can see a difference when you look at the shadow areas you can see there's a lot more also uh, interestingly enough you can see that the 12 megapixel image of the Xperia seems to be a bit uh, to the right here so it is not completely fair has something to do with the location of the lenses as well uh, because the lenses are differently located on the device but I really was at the edge of this table and took the shot when it comes to uh, the compression this is 30 millimeters this is 26 millimeters I tried to match it uh, as much as possible but what you can also see in the shadow areas is that the Xperia exposes much darker it's because of the aperture let's go to the ultra wide and you can see there's oh, well also the difference when it comes to um, the uh, whiteness of the image you can see this is a bit wider the LG G7 image and this is a bit more compressed and what you might also see already is there's a lot of more noise on the Xperia shot in comparison to the LG G7 shot let's go to the uh, Xperia box and you can see also a difference here in sharpness and uh, this is basically noises kicking in like crazy on the um, uh, Xperia and it's also not helpful that the Xperia is using some s kind of software trick to um, upscale the 8 megapixel image to a 12 megapixel image and here we have uh, the uh, 16 megapixel image on the LG G7 which looks a lot smoother also because the aperture is much bigger and uh, the sensor is also a bit for the ultra wide I think it's 1 over 3.1 inch and on the Xperia it's 1 over 4 inch means smaller pixels also on the Xperia even though it has only 8 megapixels it is not able to get rid of the noise when it comes to sharpness you can see there's simply a big difference because of the noise the noise is so disturbing here on the Xperia that the LG clearly wins when it comes to the ultra wide when we take a look at the zoom shots here you can see a clear winner again and the uh, zoom shots is interesting because the Xperia has a 12 uh, 8 megapixel uh, again upscaled to 12 megapixel zoom shooter but you can see I'm just misfocused here it's just not in focus uh, like I would expect and here it is wow really really sharp and this despite the uh, LG G7 not having a two times zoom so it is only using the um, yeah software to zoom in basically it's a software zoom in and upscaling it to 16 uh, megapixels again but with the Xperia I also can nail the shot here I done a second shot and uh, tried again and as you can see here now the autofocus hit and when we take a look here you can see okay maybe the LG a bit better but you can see it's very very close together now and also there's no mu not much noise going on I will I will almost say that this image here because it is a bit of the darker condition here is not taken with the actual tele lens of the Xperia it is more a crop into the sensor of the uh, 12 megapixels which uh, makes sense for the darkness and yeah it's basically then 
very much comparable to the uh, one shot of the LG. Let's go to the next one, which is oops, which is another test shot here. And as you can see here, when it comes to high contrast scenes, I didn't see much of a difference. The LG has, however, the the option of HDR, auto HDR in the default camera app. When it comes to sharpness here, you can see, of course, 16 megapixel first. And second of all, uh, again, the Xperia failed to find the focus, to nail the focus on the thing that I want to focus on. And the LG did it. Uh, when it comes to um, colors, you can, see, you can see clearly darker colors on the Xperia and more lighter colors on the LG. And the ultra wide, no, the, the teller uh, here, as you can see here, mm, again, it's interesting. I think I was zooming in too much on the LG. It's not two times, it's a bit more. Uh, and in general, I would say it has, of course, more noise, the LG one. Uh, in contrast to the actual Tele one, this is the Tele one of the Xperia uh, 10 Mark II. And then when it comes to macro photography or something close to being a metro macro photography, both at, the s at equivalently, I think the same same distance from the object, you can see clearly, okay, it looks very similar, but what's this? Okay, this is some kind of reflection. But when you zoom in here, you can see it's clearly not very sharp. It is not in focus. And uh, so this macro failed on the LG. When it comes to the Xperia, it nailed it. It's super, super sharp. It's super, super cool. And it is a true, yeah, almost a true macro shot, I would say, even though uh, is there more noise? Maybe slightly a bit more noise you can see here on the Xperia shot, but the Xperia when it comes to macro shots in general is a lot better. When it comes to dark shots, this is also interesting because this is the one shot on the Xperia where I had to use the night mode. I turned it on manually and this is the shot also where the uh, LG G7 turned on its night vision kind of mode. It also used a night mode. The difference here is that on the LG I just pressed the shutter and I had the photo. On the uh, Xperia I had to wait for I think three seconds for it to uh, get all the exposures necessary for creating this shot. When it comes to yeah the shot in general you can see it's a bit yeah brighter on the LG. Uh, when it comes to sharpness you can see there is I think this interesting because if you see there's a different resolution now so it seems like the LG is like uh, if it's doing this night photography thing um, re re using a reduction in the resolution and the Xperia is using the uh, fully 12 megapixels uh, when it comes to sharpness I think the Xperia nailed it a bit more let's zoom a bit out to make it uh, yeah, no, I think it is comparable. And here you can see, I think the Xperia nailed it a bit more. But when it comes to noise, you can see the LG has far less noise than the Xperia. You can see here in this gel, the noise is creeping in here. It is all smoothed out. Uh, yeah, and when it comes to other things here like this, you can see that the LG has here the advantage of focusing here on this screw and here this is completely yeah falling apart because of the noise I would say but yeah very interesting I think in night mode and by the way the Xperia night mode shot without using the night mode itself so the night shot basically looks like this if you want to compare it uh, now with the uh, LG you can also see that uh, I think again it is very close it is very close also the sharpness now is not as good as it was on the on this label at least on the other shot yeah this is a dark shot this was the one that I corrected now we come to selfie shots here same condition backlit situation you can see both have uh, difficulties with high dynamic range but both have the uh, good uh, feature that they are exposing on my face and not in the background so they don't find a find some kind of middle range when it comes to sharpness you can see a clear winner this is the Xperia in this case I'm not sure what LG does but I th it feels to me like it is um, in this darker situations the electronic image stabilization is not kicking in and the on the uh, Xperia 10 Mark II it is kicking in and so you can see uh, the exposure is quite 
better on the Xperia 10 Mark II, but it's both are not very good <laughs> when it comes to taking selfies. Yeah, those are the uh, photos and the comparison about the photos. I think I compared everything. Now, if you want to know more about those two uh, phones that are Pricely, I think in the same categor category, if you get a new LG G7 right now, I think you can get it for around 360, 370 ish, uh, maybe even less if you take a look at eBay and some used markets. And is it a good thing? Can the Xperia 10 Mark II compare? Can it beat the LG G7? Not really, but it can get very close to a flagship of 2018, which is, I think, a good thing. But what do you think about those two phones? Which is the better one for you? The Sony Xperia just came out right now, gets security updates, at least one bigger Android version still. The LG G7, even though it's a flagship device, it's two years old, so it is at the end of its support range already. Even though the hardware seems to be slightly faster and the camera seems to seem to be slightly better, and I think in terms of audio quality, there is no comparison. The LG uh, blows uh, the Xperia away when it comes to this. Mm, so what is your choice of the day? That's everything for this uh, comparison. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.